know, now more than ever, like, I don't want to just say, oh, it's just another Thursday, it's just another Sunday. I mean, we're getting new wisdom, new direction, new strength to keep pressing forward. Do y'all feel that tonight? And it's like, I don't even know, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what we are facing, if I just have breath in my body, then I have another opportunity for God to shift some things in my favor. Do y'all believe that? Do y'all have that belief? Hallelujah. Now, I'm probably not going to hype you up tonight. It's a little different from where I know that God's been dealing with me on this. So I hope that whoever is for you receive it tonight. So look at your neighbor and say, obedience, obedience. is better, is better. than sacrifice. Right. Tell somebody else, obedience, obedience. is better right. than sacrifice. Right. And for God to shift some things in your favor, you're going to have to learn to obey him. It's not always easy. You understand what I'm saying? But as you go on, as you learn more of God, as you disobey and then you see what the disobedience gets you yes. then the next time you are faced with something you may obey him more because you learn from your disobedience does anybody feel me tonight can i be real tonight ask yes. somebody can tt be real tonight can T -T now be real i don't want the fake you i want the real you tonight okay i want the vulnerable you i want the hurting you i want the trying to get there you so that god can open you up and shift some things and you can hear what the lord is saying you know y'all may disagree but i think one of the hardest things to do on this walk with christ is to obey him that's right i really do that's right i think sometimes it's really hard to understand when the holy spirit is speaking and when he is not and like i said you can disagree now it's not that we want to disobey we don't desire to disobey but sometimes what god wants us to do requires us to get outside of our box sometimes what god wants us to do really makes us deal with things that we don't really want to deal with them things gonna hurt we're gonna have to stand up to some things we're gonna have to fight some things in human nature we don't want to deal with it we want to run from our pain instead of engaging our pain but sometimes the only way to get to the next level is you're gonna have to engage that thing you're gonna have to stare that thing in the face and say you will not have power over me anymore i got authority in the name of jesus i don't care how long it takes i'm gonna get free i'm not moving until god heals me until he makes me whole until he pushes me to where I want to be. Tell somebody obedience Obedience. It's better than sacrifice. Better Sometimes sacrifice. what God needs you to do is set you up to face adversity, to face ridicule, to face uh, discrimination, and just hate, period, because you're going against what everybody else is doing. Following Christ, obeying Christ requires God and us to be willing to get all of us, the old us, all the way out of us. And I know y'all heard that, but let me tell you something. He's going to get it all out. Before you can meet that level, he's got to get all that holds you out of you, that could hinder you, that could mess you up on the road to your destiny. Before we can move, before we can attain bigger and better things, you don't get it out. Often more times than not, God requires us to stand up, to speak out, to fight for things that make people dislike us. We're going to have the unpopular opinion, okay? We're going to walk a different walk. We're going to look a different way. We're going to speak on things that not everybody is going to be able to have the guts to speak on because we've been through it. We understand it. We know what it's like with Without God, and we know what it's like with God, and so we are the ones that are destined to talk about some things that not everybody is going to like, okay, that people are going to want to come up against, but if you stand on that word, they can never face you, they can never change your understanding, because you have your own understanding, somebody better hear what I'm saying, tell somebody obedience oh, is better, it's better. than sacrifice. sacrifice, if you haven't experienced it already, this fall, sometimes you're going to have to walk alone. And you don't have to be okay with that, all right? Because in due time, that alone season is where God is birthing you, where he's instilling some things in you, whether he's building you, whether he's showing who you are, and you don't need nobody else around. That's your time. And then you will be brought with the people who can build you up, who can hold you up. Hallelujah. Now, we're about to get into the word. Don't get me wrong. And we're going to see how a man... Oh my God, he has so much potential. He could have did so many amazing things, but he threw all that away for one, fear of people, and then for two, not following God's instructions. So I'm coming out of 1 Samuel 15, and it's long, and so I'm just really going to go back to probably chapter 13 of 1 Samuel and give you just a little background so you know where I'm coming from. Tell somebody obedience, obedience. is better than sacrifice. I told you I wasn't going to be a hype message. But it's a good message if you hear what the Lord is saying. And it may only be for one person. Sometimes my message is only for one, but I came for that one. Hallelujah. I came for the one. I came for 
that one. So we're going to talk about Saul tonight. Not Saul that turns into Paul, but King Saul, the king before David. So during this time in 1 Samuel, the people of Israel whining and complaining about they wanted a king, right? And Pastor Jamal spoke on that before, but probably not right at this. So they didn't want God, the only one that could truly save them. They wanted a king. So God being the God he is, he's like, okay, I'm going to let y'all have a king. I'm going to let you do what you want. Long story short, God used Samuel, who was the prophet at the time, to anoint Saul as king, okay? He was from the last and the smallest tribe of Benjamin. Even when he was anointed, he was like, how can you use me? I'm the last. I'm the least, but God saw something in him that could really do some things. He was a very tall brother, head and shoulders above everybody. And God gave him a lot of military success. And God made it clear as he anointed him, if you obey my commands, you will have victory. You will live a great life. My hand will always be on you in a good way. But if you disobey my commands, you're going to fall into the hands of God. And that ain't going to be too good. Hallelujah. Tell somebody obedience is better than sacrifice. So when we get to 1 Samuel chapter 15, Samuel tells Saul, God wants you to destroy the whole Amalekite nation. They've been opposed to Israel for a long time. They've been sinning against me. I want you to wipe out every man, every woman, every baby, every child, every cow, sheep, every animal. Wipe them all out. Now Saul didn't understand why, but his purpose was to obey God's command. He didn't know why God wanted him to do it. He was just supposed to follow through with what the Lord said. Hallelujah. So Saul, he slaughtered all the Amalekites, but he spared the king. Did God tell him to spare the king? He spared the best of the cattle and the sheep. Did God tell him to do that? His instruction was to wipe everybody out. Not spare the king. Not save some of the donkey and the sheep and the cattle. I said wipe them all out. And you did not follow through. I anointed you as king. And I told you to destroy everything. And yet you took it to your own self. And kept everything that was quality to you. And destroyed everything that was worthless to you. What appealed to you. Not God. What appealed to them. Not God. What the army was saying. He got so proud of what the army wanted to do. Right. What the people wanted to do. Say, God, say, say, all right. I'm the one that gave you the power. I'm the one that gave you a listen. God, when I tell you to do it, you better do it. Because sometimes God gets so fed up. And that's how he was with the Amalekites. He was so fed up that he wanted to tear down everything. He wanted to destroy down everything. And I know y'all say that God is a loving God, and he is. But if you don't know before, I told you he is a God of war yes, also. Is. So he has that balance. He's loving, but if you keep on, some things about to shake. You understand what I'm saying? And not in a good way. So when this happened, God was furious and told Samuel that he was sorry that he had ever made Saul king. And that's what you don't want God to be saying about you. So when Samuel went to meet up with Saul, Saul was all happy. He wanted to turn up. He wanted to celebrate because he thought he had done the right thing. Well, I, I destroyed almost all of them. So you know how we do. Yeah. Come on, don't flex. Say tonight ain't the night to front. That's right. Tonight ain't the night to flex. That's right. I'm talking to myself too. We all in this together. You hear me? So anyway, but Samuel quickly told Saul, you did not obey God. You did not destroy everything that God told you to destroy. It was a purpose for you to destroy them all. And Saul said, well, like I said, I saved the cattle and the other animals. And guess what? I was even going to sacrifice them to honor the Lord. And that's where we come in verse and first Samuel verse, I mean chapter 15, verse 22. Samuel said, What is more pleasing to the Lord? Your offerings and your sacrifice are your obedience to his voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. So this situation with Saul teaches us that we can't obey some of what God says. We gotta obey it all. Tell somebody if you're gonna do it halfway. You're gonna do it halfway. You're not do it at all. Not you're not do it at all. time if you only gonna obey him a little bit. All right. If you're gonna obey this part, but not all that he said, it's just a waste of time. You working hard. You're doing all these good deeds. That's right. Sacrificing all this stuff. But when he tells you to move, when the Holy Spirit tells you to move, you don't do it. So then he looks at you as disobedient. He doesn't look at you as you 
following him because when I tell you to move, I need you to move right then, right there, even if you're afraid, even if it doesn't look too good, I need you to move because I have a purpose for this and I wanted to use you, but if you're not going to listen to me, then I'm going to choose somebody else that right. will do what I say. That's right. Tell somebody obedience, obedience is better than sacrifice. Better than sacrifice. Saul thought that he had accomplished something because his intentions were good. He had good intentions to sacrifice, to honor the Lord, but like I told you, all God saw was his disobedience. God is saying we can sacrifice all we want, but if, like I told you, if we don't obey the Holy Spirit when he says move, when he says stop, when he says say this, when he says go there, when he says don't, wait, hold on, and you don't do it, it means nothing. We can work hard, like I said, and do good deeds, but if we don't obey God, it means nothing. Tell somebody obedience. Obedience. It's better. It's better. It's sacrifice. It's sacrifice. I'm going to get you right. It's for whoever it's for. Check me out. And this is for all of us, like I said, me included. Why would God take us to a higher level and another level with more influence, more power, more responsibility, more tax, whatever, if we aren't going to listen to follow his instructions? His instructions and his attention now is pure. And it's holy. We may not understand, but his stuff is always good. What he tells us to do, he always has the right heart and the right mind and the right plan in order. And so when we hear and feel him leading us to do something, we got to try our best to obey so that God's plan can manifest. Tell somebody obedience, obedience. is better. I'm going to get in your spirit one way or the other. It's better than sacrifice. Better now, as we look more into Saul's story. He admits though after a while that he tried to play it like he wasn't doing nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? He, he was like I did sacrifice. I did sacrifice. But then when Samuel called him out, he was like oh yeah, I did. I did what the people wanted. I was afraid of them and I did what they demanded. Come on Saul. Now I'm thinking in my mind when I was writing this. Come on Saul. You had everything right? Like for real. You had the power. You had the influence. You was the king. You know what I'm saying? But then I relate to Saul in a way too because I used to be afraid of what people thought and so because I was afraid of what people thought I did stuff that I knew deep down inside was not right hallelujah and y'all may not have been afraid and I'm not afraid of nobody but at some point in time you have done things to make so that you can look good for other people you have care what people thought That's right. somebody there's no future there's no future in front. In front. You have been afraid, but you were thinking about what he did. You changed the way you were so that they could look at that's you right. like you were somebody. That's right. And that's what Saul did, honey. Right. He was that's a king, right. but he didn't want to destroy everybody. He didn't want to. He withheld the king for a reason. All right. Because he was afraid. Hallelujah. People can never, you got to understand this, people can never give you what God can give you. People will fill you, but God will not. So because of Saul's disobedience, he lost his place, his right. position as king. And God moved on to David, the least expected too, the last, okay, the filthy, the dirty one, the underdog, the last son. Because God was like, I'm not looking for his appearance anymore. I tried that. I tried to hide. I tried to strip. Somebody that's going after my heart. He ain't all there yet, but he do love me. He do know where to come back to. He's not going to be afraid of what the people think of him when I tell him to move, when I tell him to do this, when I tell him to cut the giant's head off. He going to do it with all power because he knows who to go back to. And that's what God's looking for. Tell somebody obedience, obedience. is better than sacrifice. So Saul had to sit back and he watched his life crumble right before his eyes because of the decisions he made. Uh, God left him and then the tormented spirit came. He was being tormented. He became jealous of David who really only wanted good things for him. It's Saul's fault. And yet he took it all out on David. David not, did not ask to be the king. He just was in the position to handle it. All right? He had murder on his mind. He tried to kill David many, many, many times. And ultimately he fell on his own sword. Killing his own self. I know that's depressing and y'all don't Story shows us what one bad decision could lead to. 
And he was actually trying to follow, but he did, he switched it and did it his own way. And that led him into just a horrible place. His story is not good. You understand what I'm saying? It started out good, and then one decision led him all away. And you know, the sad part is, y'all can disagree, but I believe that Saul could have come back from all that. I really do. Not saying that he would be king or be in, a, or be in some type of power, but I do believe that if he really clung to God and kept trying to get to God, Life like never before, but it all starts with 
the obedience, with the willingness and the desire to follow him and follow his instructions. You will be so close to God that when he says, like I told you, when he says to move, when he says to stop, when he says to do, you will say amen. Yes and amen. I'm going to do it, Father. Wherever you tell me to go, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it because I know that if I'm disobedient to you, nothing good is going to happen for me. I know that I can never get to my full potential if I do not follow you and do not respect your word. If I do not respect what you're telling me to do in this season. If I do not let go of all of the things that you've been telling me that I need to let go of for a long time. I can never be at my full potential. And I believe that we got people here who want to be obedient to God, who are trying to be obedient to God. And if you are, I say keep going, keep pushing. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. If you slip up, that's all right. Just show yourself up and let the devil know that I'm still here. Your word. As long as you're obedient, his will, his purpose.